Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where today we are going to make apricot jam. So Jim had a big errand in town, and while he was down there, he stopped by Fry's Fresh Produce and picked up a bag of apricots, these great big luscious apricots. And it was just enough that I thought would be for a great batch of jam. So we're going to be using apricot jam without pectin. I really love to use lemon juice in place of pectin and this is a tested recipe that does just exactly that and because it does not specify that it has to be the bottled lemon juice I am using fresh lemons. The reason that I love to use fresh lemons when making jam is there is a lot of natural pectin in lemon juice. Combine that with the pectin that is already in the apricots, and we have enough pectin, we don't have to add any more. So here's what, we, here's what I've done so far. I took those apricots and washed them, and then I dropped them in boiling water, just long enough to uh, loosen the skins from the rest of the apricot uh, meat. And then I plunged them in cold water, just like you would do tomatoes or peaches. And um, I will put a little card up here with a, a video of doing peaches that shows you how to do that process. I'm not going to show that process in this video. But what happens was, and this is an apricot that has been through that process, is that the skins just slip off fantastically, just so quick and easy. Just pull right off. And then we remove the pit. And then the recipe calls for eight cups of peeled and crushed apricots. Well, what does crushed mean? It pretty much means whatever you want it to mean. A lot of people love to make apricot jam where there are no chunks of apricots in it at all, in which case they'll use their food processor and and um, make it nice and smooth. I do, um, I put it in the food processor as well, but as you can see, I, we like to have a few little chunks of the apricot. And so this is the last of the apricot, so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, process these to the consistency that we like. Okay. Now I have just over four cups in here. I don't think we're going to make eight cups. If, if not, we'll just ad adjust the recipe a little bit. So here goes. Good to the last drop. We almost, almost made it. And so I am going to go ahead and just, um, we're probably about a cup short. I'm going to go ahead and just follow the recipe as, as if this were eight cups. And so the next thing that we do, and this is my jam pan, it is a Maslin pan, my all time favorite kitchen pot ever. So I'm going to dump the apricot puree in here. To that, I'm going to add six cups of sugar, according to the recipe. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just remembered that I have a, about a half of a pint of canned apricots. And even though the skins are on, I'm going to go ahead and just blend those in here. And that will make up the difference of what we were just a little bit short of, and it will be perfectly fine. So here goes.
All right, that will bring us up to what we need. And these were more thoroughly pureed because they had skins on, but no evidence of skin now. Then the next thing that we have to do is we need to add a half a cup of lemon juice, a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. So doing a second lemon. So I saw a couple of seeds go into this, so I'm just going to give it a quick little strain. And now we just stir this together. This is all there is to it. And get it there on the stove and cook it until the recipe says, until it thickens. What is going to happen with the sugar and the pectin in the presence of heat is going to form some really long molecules, which is going to thicken up our jam just the way we want it to be. So when it reaches the point that I know that it's going to gel, we will bring you back and show it. And while, um, while this cooks down and gets to the proper uh, point, I'm going to uh, get the jars ready. And I think that we will get, well, I can probably estimate pretty closely because this has a scale on it. So we're going to have about five pints. So I'll get five pint jars ready and then we will see you when um, we're getting closer. One of the things is that this process is between 1,000 and 6,000 feet only for 10 minutes. And any time a processing time is 10 minutes or less, we have to sterilize the jars. And so I will be, um, the jars are already clean. I will be putting them in, a, in the canner with boiling water so that they can be sterilized by the time that we need them. So this is going on the stove. We'll see you soon. As you can see, the apricot jam has really thickened up. And when I bring it out and let it drip off the edge, it's pretty darn thick. And as I have put it here on the paper towel, the edges have gelled. I just removed this from the sanitizing um, over in the canner and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this to within a fourth of an inch headspace. I don't think we're going to get five. I think we might get three and a half or so. Okay, I'm going to just check for air bubbles. There are really none, nor will there be. And then I'm going to wipe the rim. Ooh, this is boiling hot, which is how we want it, with a lid and a ring. These are tight. and it is going back in the canner and I will bring back another jar. All right, I emptied all the boiling water out of it and it is ready to go. So we will be back when all of these are ready to go in the canner. This is number four. We're gonna have more than four, but not quite five. Made a, made, a, made a mess of this. All right, this is the last one that will go in the canner. The other one we'll just put in the refrigerator because it won't be a full won't be a full one. Okay, we have four pints in the canner and I'm just going to go ahead and pour up this last little bit here. Oh my gosh. That makes it. It does make it. So I will slip this one in the canner. I didn't think we were going to make it. I can actually add just a little bit more. Fourth of an inch of. Make your quarter inch. Okay. Because otherwise it was about a half inch. That was a surprise. Ooh. 
All right, going in. Five pints covered with about an inch and a half of water. Once that water gets up to a good rolling boil, I will begin the timing process of 10 minutes. And then we will uh, turn the heat off, let it sit for just a minute, then bring the jars out and we will bring you back at that time. So see you soon. I'm gonna pull this up and just rest it on the side so that I can easily grab these and get them over to the rack. One just popped over here, so that's good. Another one. Okay, these are so beautiful. Look at those. I'm just absolutely thrilled. My favorite jam, number one is raspberry, and number two, a close number two, is apricot. I absolutely love apricot jam spread on homemade bread, toast with a little bit of ghee, and then slathered with apricot jam. So I have a little bit left. So we're going to do a taste test. This is all that was left after we got our five pints. And it's been in the refrigerator, but not long enough to really set up. But it is going to set up. I could tell when I washed the pan, the sides had cooled and had set up. So we're good to go. And I'm just going to taste this, give you a little report on how it tastes. Oh, love, love, love. It's apricotty, it's tangy. The lemon does not stand out at all, so I'm not tasting the lemon. I know that it adds to the tang. Mm, it's getting my mouth way back here, you know, when you get that little um, tangy taste. Sometimes your taste buds in the back just start going wild. Well, that's what's happening here. So this is fantastic, fantastic jam. So I'm so glad that Jim picked up a bag of apricots as he drove by the um, fries, fresh produce earlier today. So honey, thank you very much. You're welcome. You will be rewarded many times over with this lovely jam. Sounds okay to me. Here is the recipe. I will put the link to this recipe. It is the USDA and uh, Georgia, University of Georgia for the National Center for Home Food Preservation, apricot jam without pectin. It is very, very easy. So I hope you enjoy this, and we will be back soon with lots more videos.